So today we're going to be uh, talking about uh, our text, uh, and in doing so, I will introduce the technology and uh, give you uh, an update on uh, developments of uh, how this technology was developed initially, and also its application to the growth and differentiation of mesenchymal stem cells. I'll also cover uh, at the end of uh, that data set uh, some details about the compatibility of Alvatex technology with standard uh, cellular and molecular methodology. So you can get a real flavor of how you can use this uh, technology in your laboratory. OK, so let's talk a little bit, first of all, about 2D and 3D cell culture. and Let's uh, bear in mind what it is that we're trying to achieve with this technology. So in vivo, cells grow in three dimensions, and they do so in close proximity to their neighboring cells and also the extracellular matrix, the ECM. And the schematic diagrams on the top line there uh, depict how a cell grows closely with its neighbors. What happens, of course, when we grow cells in vitro in the tissue culture laboratory, we deconstruct those relationships between cells, and cells also come into contact with a flat substrate, most often polystyrene. And that causes a response by the cell. The cell adapts to this abnormal environment, and it changes shape. And as a consequence, uh, the internal cytoskeleton of the cell will remodel itself, and this affects the shape of organelles, and including the nucleus, which ultimately also influences uh, gene transcription, protein translation, and uh, function. So therefore, we've created a model, effectively, which can be quite different from the uh, native tissue. So let's just look a little more closely at what happens in 2D culture. So if you think about it, a cell will have approximately 50% of its surface exposed to that flat substrate, or indeed uh, the equivalent uh, exposed to the medium, the incubating medium above. Cells are flat and very thin, and the interaction between cells is minimized at their edges. And this is important because there are many situations in different cell types during development, disease, and normal function whereby cells need to communicate directly with their neighbors. And of course, if that interaction is reduced, as it is in 2D culture, then those mechanisms will not function in the same way. And of course, the other thing which cannot be produced in 2D conventional culture are complex uh, structures as what occurs in vivo. So if you look at a single cell, and uh, this is a fibroblast, and what we've done here is we've uh, stained that cell with phylloidin to stain the S-actin cytoskeleton, and we've then visualized that cell using confocal microscopy. And you'll see on the, on the left here, in the 2D situation, how a cell becomes very, very thin. And you can see the nucleus there with the DAPI staining. If you look at that cell in the three-dimensional uh, growth environment, you'll see that it's three-dimensional all the way around. And this actually is using Alvatex technology. Similarly, the nucleus also changes shape. And you see how flattened the nucleus becomes here, whereas spherical in Alvatex. Now, these observations are not new. And also, it uh, has been reported that those changes to sh the cell shape are very uh, significant in terms of uh, gene expression and protein translation. And there are numerous papers published by various scientific groups around the world re reporting these observations. So changing the cell shape is really very critical. And the idea behind Alvatex technology is that that shape change is minimized and the cells grow more naturally in a three-dimensional context. So let's now just uh, summarize that. 
So we have the in vivo, in vitro situation where we're trying to recreate uh, a more in vivo-like natural three-dimensional environment. And we want to do this in a simple and routine way to enable those who currently practice conventional 2D culture to then consider growing their cells in three dimensions to create a more relevant physiological model. So this technology will enable uh, 3D culture, enhance viability, enhance functionality, and the creation of more representative real tissues. And this is what Albatex is all about. So what is Albatex? Let me describe that to you before we move on. So if we look at the top line of images in the 2D situation, cells grow as model layers as I've already described. And you can see examples of conventional uh, vessels used to support 2D culture. In the 3D situation, Albatext, we've taken polystyrene and we've changed its geometry. Essentially, what we've created is a three-dimensional, highly porous polystyrene scaffold. And cells are able to enter this material. They do not flatten out and they reside with their neighboring cells and they form three-dimensional structures within it. If you look along the bottom line of images, you will see some scanning electron micrographs showing the structure of Albatext. Albatext is engineered into a 200 micron thick membrane. Uh, as I mentioned, it's highly porous, so most of that uh, space, most of that is space within the membrane. Cells can readily enter the material, and you'll see on the bottom right a scaffold which is now full of cells. So essentially you've made a, a, a slab of tissue in the bottom of your vessel using Albatex technology. And within that, the cells are all growing in 3D with each other. So there are various formats of Albatex scaffold products currently available. These include plate formats in 12-well and 24-well versions. Later this month, we will be releasing the 96-well format, and you can see that shown top right. In addition, we have a selection of well inserts, the 6-well and 12-well inserts. And the 12-well insert uh, has been specially designed to also fit into a 6-well plate that enables you to have a larger volume of medium to support the growth of cells in a smaller disk of Albatex. Now, the presentation of Albatex is important. So I've described to you uh, the plate format, so the 12, 24, and 96. Well, that's depicted in panel A of this uh, schematic. So here, the scaffold on the base of the well and cells receive nutrition from the medium from above only. Whereas in panel B, in the well insert, cells can receive nutrition from above and below. Now, this is important because if uh, you're wanting to maintain the viability of your cell culture for a longer period of time, we would recommend growing uh, in well inserts and if you also wish to create a, uh, a three-dimensional culture which goes all the way through the scaffold, as sh also shown in uh, panel B, then it is possible to uh, use the insert to achieve this. And panel C shows uh, another product which we have available, uh, and that's shown in the photograph in the bottom uh, right of this slide. And what that is, is a Petri dish, and inside it contains a cradle. And that cradle houses three separate six-well uh, inserts. And those inserts can be uh, rotated into three different positions, and that affects their height inside the cradle. So you can raise your culture up to the air-liquid interface if you wish. The advantage of growing in the Petri dish is that you have a much larger volume of medium supporting your culture. So this enables you to grow cultures undisturbed for longer periods of time. 
and that's what's depicted in, in C. You can see there's a larger volume of medium in panel C. So the Petri dish also enables you to grow different uh, cell types uh, in a common medium. And so if you're interested in examining paracrine uh, factors between those different uh, cell populations, uh, you can do so using the Petri dish. So Arbitex technology has been uh, extensively demonstrated for a variety of different applications. And we've done this uh, in-house. We've also done this through collaboration with academic and industrial partnerships. And also now we are receiving a wealth of data through our customer base. So these are people who have purchased and bought the product and used it in their own laboratories for their own purposes. Okay, so what uh, we can demonstrate, and um, we can demonstrate this uh, via our website. So if you go to uh, reinnovate.com, you will find a significant amount of uh, information uh, regarding the cell structure and function, growth differentiation, the development of assays, and of uh, more organized tissue-like structures. You'll find that on our website together with supporting protocol. Okay, so let's switch our attention now from the introduction of Alvatec technology to a specific application regarding uh, formation of mesenchymal tissues uh, using Alvatec, and these are primarily from uh, uh, stem cells, isolated uh, from primary sources. Now, we've been working uh, with rat adult mesenchymal stem cells, but we've also uh, validated some of our observations using uh, osteogenic uh, cell lines, and the one I will show you today is uh, MG63. So let's first of all introduce uh, what a mesenchymal stem cell is all about. Well, MSCs, as they are otherwise known, were first described by Friedenstein in 1976 whereby he reported the uh, adherence of these cells from bone marrow stroma to substrates. More recently, especially uh, in the last decade, with the significant interest developing in stem cell uh, biology, there has been uh, a large amount of information there reported regarding the uh, developmental potential of these cells. So this is a, a slide uh, I borrowed from Arnold Kaplan, one of his publications in Trends in Molecular uh, Medicine. And you can see here very clearly uh, the developmental potential as depicted at that time of a mesenchymal stem cell. And you'll see that though that stem cell type is multipotent and can give rise to a range of mesenchymal tissue derivatives, including bone, cartilage, through to connective tissue. So I will show you today and share with you data regarding the uh, differentiation of mesenchymal stem cells in Alvatex and the formation of bone and uh, adipocytes, so fat differentiation. So the first, one of the first things we do is uh, when we uh, work with mesenchymal stem cells is uh, we need to characterize them. So we acquire our MSCs, as I say, from a primary source. These are adult rats. Uh, it comes from the, uh, the femur. Although, of course, we recognize that uh, MSCs can also be derived from alternative sources, including peripheral blood, cord blood, uh, and so forth. So from the uh, femur, uh, we aspirate the bone marrow stroma. We grow those cells. Uh, in adherent cultures initially, and it is well known that the non-adherent uh, hemocritic component uh, will uh, not adhere, and you can use this uh, methodology to separate the two populations. And we expand those numbers of cells for a short number of passages, uh, only, only probably one or two passages in a 2D culture initially. And we can characterize those cells very readily. We can do this using standard uh, methodologies, uh, including flow cytometry 
to look at uh, the expression of cell surface markers. So, for example, CD44 and CD90 are present, whereas 34 45 are absent. And we can also follow a very standard uh, method to induce the differentiation of MSCs into bone or fat, to so osteogenesis, adipogenesis, respectively. And you can see along the bottom, you've got some uh, photographs showing boncosa staining, uh, Nathan's trichrome, so that's evidence of bone differentiation. Uh, and then with oil red O, you can see very nicely inside the cells the lipid droplets uh, forming in vesicles. Uh, and this can also be performed by flow cytometry. Uh, and you can see that on the bottom uh, right. So we're confident that the cells we're working with, uh, they are, uh, they have a fusiform fibroblastic uh, morphology as shown in the phase image there, and they can differentiate. So what we're interested in there, of course, is how they perform in Albertex. So this first slide shows you three different panels, A, B, and C. The first one uh, describes uh, or shows data for a growth curve of mesenchymal stem cells uh, at 4, 7, and 14 days growth. And these experiments were performed in a well insert in a six well plate uh, over this time period. This is an MTT uh, cell viability assay. It's a very standard preparation and we're examining the expansion of the cell uh, population using this technique. And you'll notice that this is a linear growth over the first two weeks. However, you will reach confluency in Alvatex. It really does depend on the uh, cell type, and some cells will reach confluency uh, within one to two weeks in three-dimensional culture as they fill the entire scaffold up. It really is very much so cell dependent as you would expect. And I'd just also like to mention at this time, this is an MTT protocol. Uh, for all the data I'm going to show you, uh, you will find online at reinnovate.com under the uh, uh, technical section, you will find information about um, the protocols to do these various techniques that I'm introducing to you today. So in panel B, we have a very uh, low power photograph uh, looking into uh, a well, uh, and you can see the, uh, the disk of Albatex, and it's been stained with a non-cytotoxic stain known as neutral red. Now the beauty of doing this is that you can perform this uh, simple staining technique uh, very quickly and it tells you immediately the presence of the cells and uh, it also shows you their distribution and whether or not they're viable. Uh, I will show you another slide later on at high magnifications you can see the individual uh, cells. So that's a very useful uh, uh, sort of uh, staining procedure that one can uh, perform um, when you are optimizing your three-dimensional culture system so you can visualize the cells quite readily. You can also use more sophisticated uh, techniques to visualize cells in Albatext when they're growing in 3D. And in uh, panel C, we have an example of uh, histology. So what you're looking at is a transverse section of a sample of uh, an Albatext uh, mesenchymal stem cell culture. And it has been fixed uh, and then embedded in paraffin wax sections placed onto microscope slides, so it's a standard tissue, process for, uh, tissue processing technology. And then uh, it's counterstained in this case with uh, hematoxylin and uh, eosin. You can see quite clearly the distribution of the cells throughout the material, but notice that they're not necessarily packed together and they are quite evenly distributed throughout the material. Um, and of course, the longer you grow this, uh, the more concentrated uh, it will become. Okay, so I'd like now to uh, proceed on to some data regarding the quantification of differentiation of these cells. So we're looking at uh, four different plots, A, B, C, and D. And the first one, A, 
is regarding uh, uh, serious red that is used to monitor collagen formation. B, alkyl phosphatase, which is known to increase um, during the medium that we're using to induce uh, bone formation. Uh, C, osteocalcin, which also increases during bone differentiation. And D is alizarin red, which uh, is a stain for calcium uh, deposition. It also uh, will detect uh, other ions such as magnesium and so forth, but they're normally present at much lower levels. So we are primarily looking at uh, calcium in this case. Also, I'd like to uh, add that all these uh, data, these quantifiable data that I'm showing you, have been normalized and corrected. So you, 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 it is not because you have more cells present in 3D culture compared to 2D culture. It is actually uh, been taken into account in terms of cell number, and we can do that in various ways. Or we can do that by determining cell number through, and that is double-stranded DNA. And I'll show, describe to you an assay of how to do that later. Uh, or we can look at total protein. Uh, that's another uh, technique. Or we can perform some other more quantifiable cell viability assays, such as XTT. Okay, so what do the data show? The data show quite nicely uh, that uh, the cells produce uh, collagen, uh, and they do so very well. And I'll show that on the next slide. Uh, alkaline phosphatase and osteocalcin levels are significantly enhanced in uh, 3D compared to 2D, and as is the uh, accumulation deposition of calcium, and we see that particularly at 14 days culture of MSCs. And the protocol we use, incidentally, to induce the differentiation of the mesenchymal stem cells it, it includes dexamethasone. So it's a very uh, standard technique which we use to do this. Okay, I think I've covered everything uh, on that slide. Um, I'd just like to draw your attention at this time to the application note which uh, describes in full uh, these slides, actually, that uh, I'm uh, presenting to you today. And if you go on to, uh, again, our website, you can download uh, the application notes for this, these data on uh, MSCs. So this next slide here shows you uh, very nicely uh, at high magnification how the medium thermal stem cells are growing in Albatex scaffold. So the top two images show low and high power uh, micrographs, and these are uh, from a scanning electron microscope. So these are SEM images. And you can see the, uh, the cells clearly inside the scaffold, and they create these uh, complex three-dimensional uh, structures spanning across the voids inside the material, growing in close proximity with their neighboring cells. Now, the bottom two images uh, the first one, the bottom uh, left, is a bond cotter stain, and this is for bone nodules. Okay, so these are dense materials, and this is evidence of mineralization. And bond cotter works by the process of precipitation of silver ions with phosphate. So we're seeing here very clear evidence of phosphate uh, deposition and formation of the bone nodule. The collagen stain here, in this case, is Macron's trichrome, and you see the collagen staining uh, very clearly in that image. So Macron's will stain collagen uh, sort of bluish green. So if we follow that uh, bone differentiation a little further, we can also look at how the calcium uh, deposition occurs over time. Uh, and we can do this using the alizarin uh, red uh, stain. This is a commercial kit. And you'll notice that uh, the uh, levels of uh, alizarin red and calcium deposition are higher, significantly higher in uh, 3D culture. So that's the red bars uh, at 14 days and the blue bars at 7 days. And there's an increase in time of the calcium deposition, as you can see. 
What's also interesting is that uh, the mesenchymal animal stem cells uh, grown in Albatex, uh, for, certainly at 14 days, show an enhanced level of calcium deposition, suggesting actually that the three-dimensional growth on its own, in the absence of uh, differentiation, is, uh, or, or differentiation media, i.e. the dexamethasone, is sufficient to induce the deposition of calcium. So we've also uh, taken a well-known uh, cell line, which has been reported frequently to produce bone uh, or to undergo bone differentiation in culture. And this one is uh, MG63. This is a uh, mosteosarcoma, and you can see uh, in panel A uh, that the histological image shows that the cells grow similarly to the MSCs. We can see in panel B, scanning electron micrograph of those cells in Albatex. It's actually quite difficult in this slide to see the Albatex because the cells are there and, and very dense. Uh, and in C, that's the uh, alizarin uh, red calcium deposition. Uh, and this is actually performed directly uh, on the scaffold. So in this case, uh, the scaffold disk is stained and then photographed from above. There's no like uh, uh, sectioning involved with this particular specimen. And the plots show again significantly enhanced um, bone differentiation when we're looking at doing a comparison between 2D conventional culture and Albatex 3D culture. And 2D also shows an increase in time, but certainly 3D shows an, a much greater increase. Again, these uh, data have all been uh, normalized. So the other form of differentiation, as I mentioned, that we've studied is uh, dipogenesis from uh, rat mesenchymal stem cells. And this single slide shows uh, some of the data from that work. So we've monitored uh, the formation of uh, fat droplets using oil redo, just like uh, I described in the 2D uh, situation at the beginning. And we've done this various ways. Uh, we have uh, in panels A and B, uh, we've removed cells from the cultures. So panel A is from cells uh, isolated from 2D and then cytospun onto a microscope slide. Uh, and then stained with oil red oak. So you can see a few droplets in those cells. In panel B, we've done the same, but we've done it from a, the 3D culture in Albatex. And you can see many more fat droplets in those cells. Now, it is possible to isolate a proportion of the cell culture from the 3D culture uh, using, uh, in this case, trypsin uh, incubation. And then there's Cells, those cells which were taken from the culture were pelleted and then resuspended and site spun onto uh, the, the slide and stained. An alternative strategy is actually to uh, prepare directly from the culture and do the uh, oil red oil staining. So, in a way, it's uh, taking it directly from the material and looking at all the cells uh, as a population and you can correct and normalize again uh, as I've described. So if you loop then from directly from the culture and do oil red oil staining, uh, you can see uh, a level certainly in 2D culture, uh, but in 3D those levels are much higher yet again. So again, we've got evidence of enhanced differentiation in 3D compared to 2D. We also have some uh, a small amount of uh, flow cytometry data of cells which have been isolated uh, from uh, Alvatex uh, and then stained with Nile red and again we see an increase in expression but I'm, I'm not showing that at this time. Okay, so I think uh, the evidence that I've shown you uh, I hope leads you to believe that the structure of the cell it's enhanced when grown in 3D culture, its viability is greater, 
differentiation is enhanced again. Uh, a function, an organisation can be improved. <coughs> Excuse me. And as I said before, uh, go to the uh, website. And you'll see examples in other tissue systems as well. Here's another interesting application that you might be interested in, and this is uh, the explantation of cells from primary sources directly into Albatex. Now, I mentioned that MSCs were uh, purified through adherence initially, which is the standard procedure, and then seeded onto our three-dimensional models. But one could consider very simply also uh, expanding from 3D uh, primary sources directly into this 3D uh, in vitro model. Uh, now this was actually, the example I'm showing you is with tissue from uh, an embryo which is placed on top of uh, Albatex and the cells flow from that tissue into the Albatex scaffold and you then maintain those cells in 3D in vitro. <coughs> in vitro, excuse me. Uh, but the same could be, in theory, practiced with uh, stromal cells as well. Something to think about. So I'd like to finish off uh, this presentation just by sharing with you uh, some of the standard cell and molecular based analytical methods which are used commonly in the laboratory, uh, uh, which are compatible with our tech technology. So we've already covered this to a certain extent, and this is the visualization of cells uh, using uh, neutral red staining. And this is a, uh, a simple uh, approach. It's rapid. It involves just adding uh, the stain following a simple uh, protocol to your 3D culture, and it will show you uh, cell distribution, uh, the density of the culture, and uh, cell viability. The beauty of this method is that you can then look down the microscope using a standard uh, uh, inverted microscope that you'd usually use to look at your uh, conventional 2D cultures and you'll be able to see your cells and the bottom right image uh, shows you that nicely. The image above that shows you the same uh, picture but at low magnification and you can see then the even distribution quite nicely in the culture. So we have uh, online a document uh, uh, dedicated to the visualization of cells uh, in our text, and uh, that's also uh, free to download. Uh, of course, we can do histology, as the data suggests. So we can fix the uh, cultures in panel A. You see some disks of our text, which have been fixed with Buin fixatives, so that's why they're yellow. But you can also use uh, paraffinaldehyde and other formalin-based uh, fixative reagents. Uh, then the uh, fixed 3D cultures are embedded, and you can see in B that they've been embedded in wax in standard uh, tissue uh, cassettes. Uh, and you'll notice as well, see how uh, the intensity of yellow increases from 4 to 21 days. You can see that in A and B. And that's indicative of the fact that many more cells now have grown and proliferated inside the 3D culture. You can also embed in uh, resin. Uh, so the sorts of resin that are used for uh, transmission electron microscopy, for example. And you can then perform uh, toluidine blue staining uh, on uh, sections from those resin blocks. And that gives you even higher resolution uh, for the histology. So uh, wax blocks can be sectioned using a standard microtome. Uh, you can section using a steel blade and generate sections as in panel C and mount them onto microscope slides. And again, you can see those lines. Those lines are actually transverse sections through your Albatex 3D culture from 4 to 21 days. And notice how the intensity of the line increases as the culture uh, establishes itself over that three week period. And of course, you go to the microscope, as in D, you can image your cells in 3D culture very readily, generate pictures such as those shown.
And once you can do all of that, of course, you can then do other things such as uh, immunocytochemistry. So it's important to show you this because uh, you can look at there for protein expression, but also you can use fluorescence microscopy. And under these conditions, as shown, the Altec does not autofluoresce. You'll notice in the DAPI image in the middle that you have those uh, dark shadows. That is actually where the Albatex is located. And of course, all the blue staining of the nuclei of the cells. Uh, now some antibodies, of course, don't like fixation and embedding in wax. And uh, it is therefore necessary to use alternative approaches. Uh, and you can use cryostat sectioning and immunocytochemistry. And Albatex is compatible with this approach as well. Uh, confocal, I've already shown you. Uh, confocal microscopy uh, is feasible using this technology, and we're about to release a new document dedicated to confocal on our website uh, as a guide. But there's also some information in our visualization white paper currently on the website. Electron microscopy, so on the left you've got transmission EM, so that's ultrastructure of two cells, left and right and they're joined there in the middle by a tight junction. So that's a nice example of cells growing in 3D and then you're imaging them at uh, very high magnifications to see the ultrastructure of uh, organelles. And in this case, you can see uh, keratin filaments. This is actually from the skin preparation. And in uh, the scanning electron micrograph on the right, you can see very nicely the uh, examples of cells growing throughout the scaffold uh, at higher magnification. Okay, so Albatex is made from uh, polystyrene, as I mentioned, and we commonly grow uh, cells in conventional 2D culture on polystyrene vessels. We grow them in multi-well plates and flasks. And often we will coat those plastic uh, substrates with a range of well-known reagents, which are most often specific to the cell type of interest. Uh, so here are some examples, collagen, fibronectin, laminin, polylysine, mixed gel, uh, and so forth. Uh, and Alvatex, as I mentioned, is also polystyrene. And this polystyrene scaffold can be coated uh, in the same way. Uh, but the interesting uh, aspect to doing this is that uh, in some instances, particularly the filamentous proteins such as collagen, we create three-dimensional uh, webs of these collagen proteins inside the material. And that's a much more natural way in which cells will encounter the uh, extracellular matrix rather than a simple film which would uh, appear on a uh, flat substrate. So that's a real significant advantage of growing cells and coating your plastic in 3D. Here's another example of uh, coating uh, Albatex. But this protocol enables you to coat a thin layer of ECM gel, in this case uh, collagen is shown, on the very surface of the scaffold. And this is really very beneficial if you're interested in growing a, a simple epithelium. So there are various uh, cavities uh, in the body which are lined by simple epithelia. And they consist primarily of a single layer of cells growing on top of a basement membrane. In a way, this is almost two-dimensional cell culture, um, if you think about it. Uh, so what we would not recommend is growing these sorts of cells inside Albatex because Albatex is not uh, designed for that. But we would recommend that you first coat Albatex, uh, render it uh, flat on the surface for this specific cell type. Um, and then an example of this is shown. So in the bottom uh, photograph, the high magnification, you can see very clearly the Albatex on top, the layer of collagen, and then on top of that, a monolayer of, uh, in this case, CACO2 cells. Okay, these are cells 
representing uh, the epithelium of the large gut. Now, you might argue, well, I can do that using a transwell, and indeed you can. However, there is, are significant advantages to using Alvatex to achieve this, and they are that Alvatex is much more porous than a, an existing transwell membrane. Uh, transwell membranes are about 30% porous at most. Alvatex is 90%. You're also growing your cells now on a, a more physiological substrate, in this case uh, collagen, which is more equivalent to the basement membrane compared to a PET membrane that you would have in uh, a transwell. And the other thing is, is that the Albatex beneath uh, is still available for three-dimensional cell culture, which enables you, therefore, to co do co-culture. And here's an example of where you can co-culture these stromal cells which you find beneath uh, the epithelium. Okay, so this is an example of co-culture of fibroblasts uh, in Albatext, a coating of collagen, and then the CACO2 cells on the surface. And that creates a much more physiologically relevant uh, situation uh, compared to a single layer of cells on a PET membrane. So that's a very nice example of how Albatext can be used to create more sophisticated models. Um, and this one is quite important, actually, because there's good evidence signaling events between the epithelium and the underlying uh, fibroblasts to control cell proliferation and differentiation. That's just an example of one of the many applications that Albatex can be used for. So, uh, just only a few more slides to go. Uh, this one uh, is in regard to transfection of cells in 3D culture. So we've partnered with a company in the US called Mirus and uh, they have developed a reagent which enables you to transfect cells in 3D culture. And uh, we have here on the right uh, GFP cells, and on the left we've got plots showing this phase activity in various cell lines. So this is a, a successful uh, reagent which can be applied to your 3D culture for transfection. And it's also important to be able to use uh, readily available commercial kits uh, with Alvatex technology in your 3D culture. So on the left, we've, we're using here a uh, commercial kit for NTT. Uh, we have a protocol for that. We also have protocols for NTS, XTT as well, and these are also available online. And it do, goes to show that the Alvatex technology is compatible with these uh, uh, existing uh, uh, kits which are available. If you require uh, to do gene or protein expression uh, analyses, then it's possible to uh, get either protein or nucleic acid directly from your 3D culture, and you can do that by lysing your cells inside the scaffold. You don't need to extract the cells first. You lyse the cells inside the material and then extract uh, the protein or nucleic acid following the commercial kit instructions. And once you have your total uh, RNA or DNA or protein, then of course we can look to do the downstream analytical methods such as Western uh, microarray, real-time PCR and so forth. It's also possible to determine the number of cells inside uh, Alphatext and one can do that using double-stranded DNA uh, based on a picogreen assay that is also commercially available. Uh, so the way this works is that uh, one first uh, develops a standard curve from 2D culture and cell counting that's shown on the left and then you would grow your 3D culture and then you would apply the assay, determine the absorbance, the fluorescence and then read off from your uh, curve, your standard curve, the number of cells. And this is a, another successful approach adapted to Alvatex technology. Okay, so I just want to finish off by uh, emphasizing the versatility of this technology. So we can grow mesenchymal cells inside Alvatex very successfully and differentiate them. But it's also feasible to now 
create uh, more sophisticated models and in co-culture. And I've shown you one example so far of epithelial cells. Uh, if you go again to our website, you will find other examples uh, in cancer cell biology and in neuroscience. So these uh, schematics, they, what they do is they give you uh, examples of how you might do co-culture using alpha technology. So number one is where you would perhaps mix the cells, uh, the suspension of two different cell types and feed them together. Or you could, for example, in number two, do 2D culture on the bottom of the well and in the insert do 3D culture and study you know, paracrine factors between the two cell populations. Uh, interestingly, in number four, we've got two disks against one another, uh, and it's possible actually to see one cell type on the top of our text and another on the bottom of our text uh, by turning the uh, insert upside down uh, for the second cell type. So you can then study how cells behave in layers and interact with one another. Uh, so all of this is in our uh, brochure, which is also available in our website. And here's actually an example. So in panel A, we've got um, fibroblasts, which are established for uh, seven days. And then after that, uh, we've seeded a uh, cancer cell line on the surface of uh, the uh, fibroblast 3D culture. And the aim of this uh, co-culture is to develop it into a model of a cell invasion, whereby we'd be looking at cancer cells invading uh, in amongst the fibroblasts, which are mimicking the uh, equivalent stromal tissues. Okay, so in summary, uh, Alvatext is a versatile platform for three routine 3D culture. It is easy to use, it is widely available in different formats, and we're adding to those formats uh, as we go forward. Uh, it's important to recognize that it's been exemplified uh, independently as well as the data I've shown you from our own laboratories. Its adoption is becoming widespread. Um, groups are now uh, working with this technology, presenting their data at meetings and publishing papers. I do recommend that you go to our website for additional information and also on our website you will be able to take advantage of a, a free evaluation of this technology. So you can sign up via the website uh, free of charge, providing your details, just follow the simple instructions, and then via our distributors, we will ship to you uh, a free sample of this technology for you to try.